Earlier today, I spoke with uh, Rise Entertainment 360 co-anchor Lola Oganike about the interview that she and guest anchor Patrick Riley did with Tracy Morgan just two weeks ago. Lola, thank you so much for taking some time to be on Arise America. Thank you just you came me. off of Arise Entertainment 360. And the, the irony in this really tragic story is you just interviewed Tracy Morgan just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, we had him on two weeks ago, and he was so excited about life. He has a new baby girl. He's happily married. All he was talking about was the future and how optimistic he was. He's on tour now, or was on tour until this accident. And he just talked about just loving the audience, loving being on stage, the feeling of that immediate rush from the audience. And he was just really in a really, really good space. He's been sober for a while, so that was also great. And just, it was one of his most, I think, philosophical, one of his deepest, one of his most, um, self-explorative interviews I've seen. He wasn't sort of doing the whole Tracy Morgan over the top right. shtick where, you know, he's ripping off his shirt and he's saying like, cool or doing with my daddy. impressions yeah. and that kind of stuff. Nothing. It's so interesting. It's ironic. So we have a little bit of that interview. Okay. We, we want to play that a lot. What he says about how he feels about the future. And then we'll talk about it on the back end. This is okay. Tracy Morgan just two weeks ago on 360. Love what you do. Just love what you do. Keep the love first. When you keep the love first, it's God first, you know, and that's ultimate. And I like to say that proudly, you know. I keep him first, and he guides me through all of this. Now, there will be ups and downs. Yes. You know, but as my man Mayweather told me one day, you know, tough times don't last. Tough people do. Mm -hmm. So being, being uh, born where I was from, and the projects and all that made me tough. My family keeps me honest. So I love them for making me who I am and being born to where I was, you know, shaped me. And it made me tough. I think the tough... The t I look at it like this. You know, the tough times in my life are over. Yeah. You know, we're going to have ups and downs, but the tough part is over. And that's growing. Those are the growing pains in your 20s, your teens. You know, no yes. matter where you're from, mm -hmm. it's tough. You know, what's so ironic is he thought that the tough times are over, mm -hmm. and I'm sure this is going to be a challenging time. But I wonder, I'm sure he had no idea. He was prophetic. He said, tough people last through tough mm -hmm. times. And they do. And I think what... Uh, I, I'm actually pleased to see that portion of the interview again because it lets me know that emotionally and mentally he's ready for the physical challenge he's about to face. Mm -hmm. So yes, he has broken bones, yes, he has bruises, but internally I feel like he's at his strongest, strongest than I've ever seen him. Mm -hmm. So again, he is sober, he is clear-minded, he was very self-assured and very confident about the future. That's exactly the place you want to be in internally when you're going through something Absolutely. so damaging to your external. And isn't it a relief that this is not the result of, at least on his part, or those other entertainers that were on that limo bus, of reckless behavior. No. This is not about substance abuse or hard partying. It was just a freak accident. A freak accident. A truck driver who allegedly fell asleep at the wheel. Yeah. 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 So. It's, um, but I got, yeah, just seeing that makes me feel good. It makes me feel good. I feel like, you know, again, the tough times, he will have physical tough times ahead of him. He's got, you know, broken ribs, a broken femur, a broken leg, a broken nose. Uh, they, uh, his body's damaged, but his soul, his mind, and his heart from that interview, I got the feeling that they are all intact. It's reassuring. Mm -hmm. I know that you covered this for Arise Entertainment 360. Yeah. Were you able to learn any new information about his condition or about anything else about the accident that you can report Not as of yet. Thus far, his uh, PR person issued a statement yesterday saying that he was operated on yesterday for his leg mm -hmm. and that he is responding, so that is a good sign because going in, he was definitely very banged up. And, you know, one of his mentors and dear friends actually died, so the fact that he actually made it through the crash and was able to survive an operation to his leg and is able to speak is it's a blessing so like yeah. I said one step forward in and, the right direction yeah we want to be sure and uh, send our condolences and our thought to James McNair's family the comedian known as Jimmy Mack who did pass away in uh, in this accident mm -hmm. you know it's also so ironic that in the interview that you did with him he talked about how much he loved being on stage yeah. in that live audience he was coming from a gig mm -hmm. when this happened let's play a little bit of All that right. we'll talk yeah. some more relationship between you and them are established in 30 seconds. Yeah. They let you know. With TV, you gotta wait for the ratings. Movies, you gotta wait for the box office. Stand up live, they let you know right away if they love you or not. Yeah. And they, they love you. They will simply say, well, you know, I love them back. Yeah. I give them the love with my comedy, with my sense of humor. I can't do it no other way. 
Yeah. And that's what makes him such a brilliant comedian, is that he is present. And you can tell when he's on that stage, he feels alive. He's at his most alive when he's on the stage. Mm -hmm. And it's so wonderful to see, you know, social media has, has lit up in support of him yes. and for those that are on, that were on that limo bus. It's nice to see people rally around to it's support. It's true, it's true. And I think he'll feel, just feel, feel so happy to know that he is so loved that he is so loved because so much of his life, especially his formative years, he spent feeling unloved. Mm -hmm. So the idea that the world is rallying around him and hoping and praying that he gets better as well as the other victims in the uh, on the tour bus um, yeah, that got I injured. Yeah, there are two thing. others that are in critical mm -hmm. uh, critical condition. Yep. And uh, Bears mentioning that was Jeffrey Malia, I believe, is how you say his last name, who is his manager, and Artie Fuqua, yep. uh, who also is a comedian. Tell me, you know, you and I, we talk to people on camera, and yep. sometimes they're one projection on camera, and they might be a little bit different when the, the red tally light is not on. What was Tracy Morgan like I just was, as a man? I was fully, I'm a huge 30 Rock fan, so I was fully expecting some version of Tracy Jordan to show up. <laughs> so, and I even asked him about that. How, um, how close are you to your Tracy Jordan character? And he told me, you would never ask Tina Fey that. You would never ask Alec Baldwin that. And it's true, but so many of his interviews, his public interviews, especially on shows like Conan and Jimmy Kimmel and Jimmy Fallon, they, he'd always played this character that was more similar to Tracy Jordan than the Tracy Morgan I saw on our set that day. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting someone to be that philosophical, frankly, that deep, and someone who seems to have done a lot of work on getting himself together, getting himself sober, and in, in the pop culture sense of the phrase, mm -hmm. in the truest sense of the phrase. Yeah, so, As you so aptly said, it's probably exactly where he needs to be. Be to get him through this time. Mm -hmm. Lola Oganike of Arise Entertainment 360, thanks for stopping by Thank with us. Thank you for having Appreciate me. It. Thank right. you. Take care.